My name is Ryan Biggs and I'm the Chief Engineer for the CGen decommissioning project. CGen was decommissioned in three phases. Uh, the initial phase was started in May 2016, which was the removal of the powertrains. Uh, these were lowered onto a flat top barge and removed from the lock uh, in the space of a few days. And the crossbeam was then lowered to its operational position um, for further decommissioning in the next year. The second phase of uh, CGen decommissioning took place at the end of 2018. This involved the removal of the top sides, lift legs, crossbeam and internal power conversion equipment. After the decommissioning took place, CGen was left with a steel cap on the top with the day shapes and navigation light reinstated and the access ladder um, for maintenance purposes. The final phase of CGen decommissioning was in July 2019. Um, this involved the cutting of the four quadrupod feet and the uh, lifting of the structure uh, up the lock for final processing. So the diamond wire cutting tool is on the forward crane of the vessel and the ROV is deployed from the stern. The ROV then swims down to the tool and grips on using its manipulators and steers the tool onto the leg that's about to be cut. The tool has hydraulic clamps, so once in position the clamps are activated and the tool clamps onto the pile. So once the tool is successfully clamped onto the pile, uh, the ROV's now done its job and the tide is starting to build. So the ROV lets go of the tool, swims back up to the vessel to get out of the current, which is now building up to one knot. So the installation of the tool and the ROV um, for installing onto the pile all has to happen at slack water. Um, so we have a period of time of about 10 minutes in order to do that. Uh, if we don't get to a certain position in a certain time, we have to abandon the operation and then re-attempt it on the next slack water period, uh, roughly six hours later. Once the tool is clamped on, uh, the umbilical feeds the tool and the diamond wire blade starts to rotate. The carriage moves forward presses against the pile and then four hours later appears out the other end and the foot is successfully cut. So the vessels involved in lifting the structure include uh, an 80 metre long flat top barge. Uh, the barge is modified with hydraulic chain pullers on the bow uh, with some steel work to support that, that structure. There's four tugs involved for manoeuvring the barge around the pile um, during the final approach before the lift. The barge makes a uh, final approach uh, stemming the tide just before slack water. The chains are then lifted using an excavator digger into the chain pullers where they're held. So once the three chains are all lay in the hydraulic chain pullers, the digger then rolls back to the stern of the boat. All the time the tide is building and the skippers of all the various barges all have to work in conjunction with each other to keep the barge in position while the final attachment is made. The load is then taken on the chain pullers, the bow starts to dip and it keeps dipping, keeps dipping, and we got to around 600 tonne, we had some lift. The chain pullers then carried on lifting for another metre or so, and at that point we waited for the tide to build. As soon as CGEM was clear of the bottom, uh, it then floated back up into the lock. Uh, the reason for this was uh, further sea fastening was required before it could uh, venture out into the Irish Sea. Um, but the importance of going up the lock first was to get it out of the strong tidal flow that is seen in the narrows. We had to spend as little time there as possible and the whole operation was planned around the one hour that we had to actually lift the structure and get it up the lock. 